Good morning everyone. Today we are on the east coast of Taiwan. We just arrived here a few hours ago. So we came from Taipei. We got a train from Taipei to a place called Hualin. Not sure if that's how you pronounce it. That was around $14. And we also got this rental car here, which is 45 US dollars. We just got that now, so that's for two days. And we're in Taroko National Park. Look at this already. Super beautiful, the color of the water here. I think that's called the Liwu River. So we're gonna be here for two days overall. We're gonna visit some easier locations today. And then tomorrow we're gonna do a pretty hardcore hike. So it's gonna be awesome. And the park is actually free to enter. So you don't have to pay anything at all to be here. So there's multiple different points where you can stop. It's pretty much just one road and yeah, just loads of different areas, viewpoints. This seems to be like the old bridge, I guess, closed off there for vehicles. That's the new big modern one. The tunnels are cool though. You're just constantly going through these tunnels everywhere. There's another viewing deck here. Wow, beautiful. I bet that's freezing cold right now in the winter. Man, it's so freezing today. Yeah, the the wind is very cold. It's like an icy cold wind. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah the coldest day in Taiwan so far. So this is interesting here. It's saying that all oh, this is marble now. But it says that it used to be coral millions of years ago. Which eventually turned into limestone. And then over time, with the effects of the movement of the South China tectonic plate, it metamorphosed into marble that you're seeing right now. So I think this area has a lot of like earthquake activity. Yeah, and I think in the first week that we were here in Taiwan, uh, we were in Taipei and we felt an earthquake. Yeah, we left our building. Yeah, we left our building and I think it was a minor one, but the center of it was here in this region. So that's why it wasn't so bad in, in Taipei. Yeah, apparently it's pretty common around here. And that's how this was formed in the first place. is one of the many suspension bridges that are in this park. I think there's usually a waterfall here. There was a photo back there showing a waterfall. Oh yeah, it's completely dry right now. But when we drove around in the car, we could see some other waterfalls coming down the mountain. So hopefully we'll be able to see one in this video. I got a really nice open view of the river from this one. You can see that it says here to not enter without a permit. So there are some trails around here where you have to apply for a permit. So the one that we're doing tomorrow, we had to get a permit. It said to apply months earlier. So we didn't think we were gonna have time. We only applied two days before, but yeah, they approved it like yesterday. So we're gonna be able to do it. Certainly a awesome national park. So the moment you enter, it already looks like this everywhere.
So we've now come to the little village that's inside the park. I think it's called Chiang Xiang, a little doggo. Nice and furry, bed is warm. And we're looking for some food to get warm. Some soup would go down nice right now. So just like many of the places in Taiwan, you get this kind of menu where you just mark off what you want to eat. I think I'm going to get beef soup noodles at 130. And I'll probably get some dumplings as well for 100. And they got vegetarian options for Carol. Yes. So they didn't have the dumplings, but the soup is really big, so I'm happy. And beef noodle soup is one of the main dishes in Taiwan. And Carol just got vegetable noodles. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much that one was? No. Not sure. I'm just too hungry to think about the price. <laughs> yeah, the, the beef piece is a uh, huge, big chunky beef. Mm. Yeah, once again, absolutely delicious. We ended up stopping at this other place because I'm going to get two of these sausages here. Junky sausages. There we go. I think that's mine. Thank you. So this was a uh, hundred for two overall. Still a bit hot to eat though. And we just noticed that there seems to be a temple up on that hill there. You can see the pagoda. So I think we're going to go up there and check it out. Man, I had to hide my sausages yeah, then. They were about to attack you. I and everybody was shouting something in Chinese. I think they can smell my sausages. So these monkeys are attacking everybody. <laughs> That's one angry monkey. So there were literally people trying to pass the bridge and they were grabbing on them. Angry monkeys. There's the big statue that we could see from the bottom, which I think is Guan Yin, the Chinese goddess. Get some great views from up here too, of the village. So it really is just a tiny little village, just those set of buildings right there. And we only just noticed now that there's a hotel there with a rooftop, seems to have a tennis court too. I think you were checking some places here within the park to stay. Yes, I think uh, I saw two different hotels, but they were very expensive. Fancy hotels? Yeah, I think more than $200 per day. Yeah, I bet that one is. I mean, rooftop pool, get all this as your view. Probably worth it though. I think the pagodas must be on the top. Can't see them from here. Man, we've been walking up a lot of steps lately here in Taiwan every single day. All right, there it is. Huge pagoda. I don't think you can climb to the top of it by the looks of it. Nobody here at all. Ah, so there are stairs, you're just not allowed to go up, I don't think. Both sides are closed off. the next morning and now we're doing the main trail that we really wanted to do here it's called the Jelu historic trail old trail 
and I think it's around three kilometers overall. Apparently the first two kilometers is just constantly uphill. And for this one, we had to pay a bit extra. So the ticket office was back there and it's 200 per person for adults. I think it's a uh, hundred for children. And once again, we're going across another one of the suspension bridges and it still looks extra beautiful here. There's also another bridge all the way up there. I don't know if we're going across that. Carol's got a nice style going on. <laughs> Looking Hiker good. style. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll let you know how long it's gonna take. We saw that people did it in four hours, some others six hours. I guess it just depends on the person. It's about 8 a.m. right now, so yeah, we'll see. And this is the trail that you need a permit for, so you have to apply online. They only let 96 people in here a day. I think on the weekends they let 156 people but today will only be 96 because we're on a weekday. Now we're approaching one kilometer. It is just constantly uphill. Like it said online, it's just loads of steps. The nature is absolutely amazing. These kind of plants are everywhere. Trail base, unsteady, proceed carefully. The trail's actually been pretty fine though. I mean, there's a few rocks scattered around, but yeah, no problem at all. So some amazing, Views already. Top of this rock here. Check it out. Oh, we've actually come higher than that. That suspension bridge, the high one. So I don't think we are crossing it. Still in the clouds today. Still not a sunny day. A bit clearer than yesterday though. So even up here on the mountainside, we have the cherry blossoms. Just to make it even more beautiful. That we saw loads of in Taipei. So this part with the cherry blossoms was actually an old Taroko tribe village called Badagang. So we did notice we went through like some big gateway there, some pillars. You can actually see the base here of where some buildings would have been. Up there as well, you can see some walls here too. This would have probably been a building. There's actually a photo here, so you can see that there was a proper building where we stood. That was during the Japanese colonial period a police station up here. <laughs> So we're now at 2.4 kilometers and I think this is the part where the trail gets exciting yeah. or dangerous or both. <laughs> or both. Yeah, so this is the part that you see in the pictures now where you're really on the cliff edge. So yeah, you don't want to be falling down there. I think it gets even more sketchier later on. Oh cool, check out the little tunnel too. Didn't know that there would be tunnels around here even up here, not only on the roads. So regarding this historic trail, it was actually originally made by the indigenous people here. I think they were called the Truku, the people that would live around here in the early 1800s. And they use it for uh, hunting, like a hunting pathway. I guess there'd be some other kind of animals at this altitude for them to come all the way up here. Whoa, <laughs> let me just look back now. Look at that. <laughs> Crazy. There's a little waterfall over there. Ah, yeah, there. So probably in the rain season, you'll see 
water coming down here in loads of different places. And then back there I mentioned the little Japanese police station. So during the colonial period, the Japanese needed a road to carry around artillery, things like that. And they found out about this road. So that's why they started using it. And that's why they had a police station. Man, look at this though. This is absolutely nuts. Whoa. The river all the way down there. So how long did it take to get here? Uh, one hour and 20 minutes. One hour, 20 minutes. Okay, it'll probably take us about four hours if we take it easy. Maybe only three hours it'll be quicker going down. So apparently during the period where the tribes would use this as a pathway, it was many parts that were just 30 centimeters wide, which I guess they wouldn't let you track on it right now if it was only that wide. But, uh, but according to what we read, the Japanese widened it up and I think uh, the smallest area is 90 centimeters. centimeters which right still now. isn't a lot. No. <laughs> yeah, but it's better than 30 centimeters. Look at the width here. Yeah, this, this might part. be the 90 centimeter part. <laughs> oh man, so so high. Yeah, I think at this thinner part I'm gonna start holding on now. <laughs> Stay closer to the rocks. Oh, look at that ledge there. Poop. Yeah, it is, but what? I don't know, it's a lot. Well, that's a lot of poop over there, too. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, Maybe. because of this shelter, this rock. It's almost like a little cave. I don't know what animal that is, though. It's not that small. It's a lot, though, Jesus. Yeah, somebody has um, food poison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the long, thin area is a lot longer than I thought. I thought it was just like a, a quick part that was that thin. There's even signs there saying watch out for the snakes. Imagine you see a snake and you're on this cliff edge. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, you gotta stay close to the rocks, but at the same time, be, watch out for the, the snakes or yeah. the other animals. Is this the end? Yeah, I think this is the end. What's it saying here? This used to be an outpost in the Japanese colonial period. Ah, like a military this outpost. Yeah, this area here for the hikers to rest. So that trail took us three and a half hours overall to get back, so yeah, a lot less time than 
what we were planning and expecting. We weren't doing it in a rush either. We even stopped to fly the drone, take pictures and stuff, but yeah, it just took us that long. And a lot of people consider that to be the best cliff trail in East Asia and you'll see the signs there saying that so I think it's definitely probably one of the best and now we come to an amazing spot which is one of like the iconic images of Taroko the shrine over there and there's also a temple up there that you can visit but I think we'll walk over to that shrine so here it says the eternal spring shrine 1960 yeah mountains and temples really go together so nicely and especially with a river and a waterfall so can't wait to see it up close and apparently this this shrine is dedicated to the 225 workers who died to build all the the highway here so once again another tunnel to enter this place so we didn't even know that all those people died building this place i suppose looking at the terrain that they had to build on and yeah, all those years back with the working conditions and the equipment you can kind of have, imagine it now i guess so here's one of the waterfalls that we could see it's actually coming through this tunnel though that is clearly man-made right yeah, i don't know what's going on there maybe they diverted the water somewhere back there and here's the main waterfall that we could see loads of water all the other waterfalls that we've seen so far look so dried up we're not here what an amazing shrine so i guess during other times of the year when it's raining more not the dry season this will be all full of water but right now it's only a little bit obviously now come to the coast i don't know if this is still part of taroko national park or if it's outside of it but the scenery still looks the same so still these massive mountains and look at this coastline almost looks like hawaii how i'd imagine hawaii the hawaii of asia <laughs> yeah this place is awesome we're just it just keeps getting better we are very surprised but taiwan overall you mean? taiwan yeah uh, everything is super organized and super beautiful but yeah we love it <laughs> yeah a big variety of different cool things to see too so we saw these steps coming down we thought that we were going to be able to go on the beach on the sand but it comes down to another view deck even lower although it looks like the coastal views are even better from here wow really nice beach though all oh, right it stretches all the way down there i thought it was just a little part but it goes all the way down probably access it from over there then and walk to this part and we're actually staying on the beach around here our accommodation so after we finish up here on the coast i'll show you that a bit further down the coast now there's multiple places where you can stop so that's good and over here we have the train line so that's the same line that we actually came here on so we got some amazing views on the way here too although i didn't realize we came through this huge mountainside here yeah the gorge was protecting us from all this wind wasn't it <laughs> yeah now it's getting very cold because of the wind the wind is very strong we it's probably were... like this all day we just didn't realize in yeah, there we were in the middle of the 
the big mountains but uh, we wanted to fly the drone here but i don't think it's a good idea yeah it's not a good idea at all it's too strong some more awesome view decks well it's a way better view man that blue really is intense i can't believe it's that color with no sun at all it's kind of crazy that the national park is for free too you don't pay anything only if you're doing that trek that we did so you get all this for free This is the accommodation that we've been staying in. It's called Flower and Green Collection. Pretty interesting place. I really like it though. Look at all the trees and plants everywhere. Even from here, you can see the huge mountains in the background. Interesting style though. It's like these wooden buildings scattered around. We're in the one in the corner over there. And I'll write down the price because I don't remember how much it is. I think it was around 50 overall. So this part here is just a shared area because there are other rooms in here. So this is an all private. It's not really like a proper kitchen. You can't cook or anything in here. But they do have hot water here. So you can be able to make tea or a coffee. And the room is just a very simple one. Don't even have a TV or anything in here. And the AC doesn't heat up either. And it does get quite cold here at night, but the blankets were pretty thick, so wasn't too bad to sleep. And that's about it, really. The bathroom here. At least you have nice boiling hot water in the shower, so that's good. And right in front of our accommodation, we just have this tiny little trail here. And this is where you come for the beach. So this is called Manbo Beach. Same color as the beach that we could see from the viewpoints. It's like a gray color, I guess. Not black. Well, it's pretty big, isn't it? Wide. Almost like uh, those beaches in Iceland. <laughs> oh, the huge ones. Yeah, the dark, dark, sand. dark sand. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this mix of colors on uh, any beach before. Gray sand, turquoise water. I bet it'd be pretty awesome here in the summer. It does get super hot in Taiwan. I never really thought about coming here for a beach vacation, but yeah, it does look like there's some good beaches around here. I think down in the south, they're more like tropical looking than around here. And back there, you got a big group on the ATVs. You can do ATV tours around here. Our place has kayaks too. Obviously don't want to do that right now in the winter, but be another cool thing to do when it's a bit hotter. Got these things as usual them everywhere so the viewpoint that we went to before was all the way down there about 20 minutes that way but as you can see here even going this way it's still the huge mountains everywhere See how cold it is. Oh, it's coming. Whoa. Oh, no way, it's really warm. Oh, wow. I would have swim. Yeah, you could actually swim in that. I'm surprised how warm it is. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like nice and cold, but it's good, very good temperature. Me too. Yeah, somehow it's warm. These boots are waterproof, by the way, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, that is nice and warm. No way. So that's it for this video. We're just gonna head back to our accommodation now, have a nice warm shower to warm up. And then the next video, we're gonna be in another destination. We're gonna head to a place called Khao Siung down south and yeah, see how the south of Taiwan is. As Carol mentioned, we've just been really surprised overall by Taiwan. It's definitely one of the most underrated countries that we've ever been to already. 
you watched our previous videos, you'll see all the awesome places that we've been to. So it's been a really nice surprise. If you like this video, just drop a like as usual to support us. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you in the next one.